Hey everyone, my name is Yaru and you're listening to the Daydream Rules podcast. Again, thank you so much for being here and supporting the show. It feels especially beautiful and touching at this time and I hope that wherever you are, you are safe and staying home and that you have support around you. I already promised I'm really committed to bringing more episodes out in the coming month because I think this would be a beautiful way for us to stay in touch and feel a sense of connection and hear more stories from around the world. So today I am bringing you a conversation with Jessica who is a beautiful coach, facilitator and researcher and who worked with me to help me learn how I can work with the Enneagram. And in case you're wondering, I am a two, (laughs) just coming out. And yeah, it's been really, really interesting to learn more. I had not been um, so into personality tests before, but what we did really was so in-depth and super interesting and revealing. and, And it was also just a really joyful conversation that I'm excited to share with you. I actually recorded this this summer and I'm ashamed to have realized just now that I still hadn't published it yet. So I hope that this brings you some joy and that maybe it's an interesting distraction from everything that's going on right now. Also to announce that this Sunday I will be hosting the second grief um, grief tanning session. The last one last week was really beautiful. There were about 10 of us and we did a little bit of gentle breath work, some self-massage, a little bit of journaling and sharing and so you're really invited to come to that if you like. Um, I'll link to that in the show notes. It's donation based, you can come as you are, you don't have to be on screen. It's okay to not share, it's okay to cry, it's just nice to be together and process a little bit what's going on right now. So yeah, hopefully see you there and again thank you so much for listening. Hey everyone, I love when conversations begin with a little giggle, uh, such as this one. I'm speaking to a really wonderful person today named Jessica Ruiz. Oh no, I mispronounced it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll let you do that in a minute, but I'll just <laughs> can't go for now. <laughs> sure. um, I met Jessica in a community called Creatively Connected by Sophie Dale. And to be honest, I think I looked at her website probably like seven or eight times over a span of two months. And then there came a moment where I was like, oh yes, I really want to work with Jessica. Now is the right time. I have a bit of extra money and this really speaks to me. So one of the many beautiful things Jessica's offering is work around the Enneagram. And I've done a very comprehensive kind of test with her. And I want to be super honest and say that until this summer, I hadn't never really considered myself a personality test kind of person, but there was something in how Jessica speaks about it and how it all sense to me, made sense to me that was just like, yeah, that feels really good. And it's also not like I was feeling judgmental towards a personality test. I just had never come across one and really done a very sincere test. But I really loved the results, even though there was some resistance in the beginning where I was a bit like, oh, is that really me? What does that mean? Does that mean I'm going to stay in this box for the rest of my life? At the end of the day, it was really like a beautiful turning point to really dig deeper with Jessica into the results and think about how that has um, played out in my life and how it... um, yeah, affects how I'm showing up and how I'm motivated. So don't want to talk too much about myself and my Enneagram, but I'm just going to say I'm so excited to speak to Jessica today because I really appreciate her work and what she has brought into my life, and I'm super excited to share her insights with you. So Jessica, thank you so much for being here. I'm sorry I got your sunny wrong, even <laughs> just asked you about it. <laughs> It's so lovely to be here, and you're definitely not the first person who has said my name incorrectly. Um, even in my home country, people do, but it's pronounced Jessica S, as in yes. A-C-E. Yeah. Yes, cool. Thank you so much. Well, um, why don't we begin with um, letting everyone know where you are in the world right now, what nature is like around you. I always feel like that feels really grounding, so when people listen, they can imagine where we both are. Mm. So I am based on the east coast of South Africa, and the town is called Salt Rock, located on the Dolphin Coast. 
Um, an aptly name because I do actually get to see dolphins from my home and it's whale season at the moment. So get to spot a couple of whales every now and then as well. Um, really, really lucky. And then a couple of hours drive inland, we've got the mountains. So yeah, really, really lucky to be in a part of the world where you have such beauty all around you. Mm-hmm. That sounds incredible. And I love this um, idea that when you go swimming in the sea, even if you don't see them or they don't come near, you are kind of swimming with dolphins. Isn't that mm. magical? That's- mm, it kind of makes you feel like you, you're having a lucky day every day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, so I have already touched a little bit on you working with the Enneagram, but I would love to know a little bit more, like how would you describe your work? Do you have official titles that you like using? And, and what other things are you offering? Mm, mm. So I suppose officially I would be called a coach and a facilitator and a researcher, but I actually like to think of myself more as a thinking partner because that's really the common thread through everything that I do. I like to work with people to help them gain insights about themselves and their relationships, their work, get a new perspective on things, maybe look at what's been holding them back in the past and more importantly, to help them start living their lives from a place of more conscious choice. Um, And the role of thinking partner is really really just that, Um, having somebody to bounce ideas off and be challenged by and um, look at things in a different way. So I do that in a number of ways and that changes over time. (laughs) So at the moment it's um, through one-on-one coaching. Um, I offer group workshops um, and I also work in organizations. So I go into companies and help their teams uh, look at the dynamics between the different members and also do some research work in organizational culture. So it's very varied. Um, which satisfies my Enneagram 7-ness. <laughs> um, and as I said, yeah, it changes a lot depending on what's going on and what's fascinating me and interesting me at the time. Mm-hmm. That is so beautiful. I'm really glad that you found a way to bring all these different things together. And I know how beautiful it is to do different things and to have this like very playful, creative work life. Um, so that's great. Um, mm. and then, yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say, it's also, um, it feels like a relief to be okay with that because especially when you start out a business, it seems like there's so much pressure to do things in the right way or to have your strategic plan and mm. to know where you're going in the next five years or whatever it is that people suggest. <laughs> but what I've learned along the way is that nothing is really cast in stone and you change your mind all the time. Mm-hmm. And that's actually okay. That's just working with your rhythm and working with Mm -hmm. life. Yeah, totally. And I would flip another one of those ideas. I think there's a really strong message that you should niche and be really clear who you're offering something to, which I definitely think has some value and, you know, makes practical decision making easier sometimes. But I think this year or this summer in particular, I found that finding ways in which I can be more myself is actually more powerful. And then anyone who wants to work with me can be whoever they want to be, but I get to be myself and offer my things and see how that changed over time. Um, And it's, you know, it's always an interconnected thing, obviously, but I think it's more important to know who you want to be in business rather than who you want to make something for. Um, yeah. Mm, I love that because you're right. People will resonate with your particular frequency and then they'll be drawn to your work. And whether you offer A or C, mm-hmm. they'll want to participate because it's you who's offering yeah. it. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Yeah, totally. Love that. I, I really like your website and the writing on your website. And, you know, I'm a web designer. So, and I don't actually look, I think, at other people's websites from a 
perspective of a web designer, but I will say that sometimes it just feels nice to hang out on someone's website. And yours is one of these where I just feel like, huh, this is really chill. You know, I'm not being bombarded here. It's nice colors. Everything feels pretty calm and coordinated, but yet really exciting. So I've been hanging out on your website a bit. Ah, oh, that's so <laughs> lovely to hear. Thank you. That's, that's really cool feedback. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, like I said, I also really like your writing and how it kind of, uh, is illustrated by the visual language on your website. And I loved what you wrote about living an uncompromised life. And since people listening don't see it right now, I wonder if you could speak a little bit more about what that means to you. Mm, it's such a big topic for me. It's uh, To me, living an uncompromised life is about being so clear on who you are that you choose to live in alignment with that fundamentally. So I would say it's, um, I would say it's also standing in your power so that you can show up in a real and unedited way. And it's probably, it's probably easier for a lot of us to resonate with what living a compromised life is about. So we might know what it feels like to be masking an aspect of ourselves or holding a portion back or maybe people pleasing or maybe perfecting or maybe living our lives in obligation or expectation of other people. To me, that's living a compromised life, which isn't the same as compromising actually, because sometimes people say, but you know, compromise is life. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as compromising. Compromising is making choices that you've weighed up through awareness and you've, you know, you've made an intentional choice. Mm -hmm. you, you're clear that this is a decision that you're making. But feeling compromised is very different. That's something you feel in your heart and in your body. You can feel that there's a piece of you that's missing. And you can feel when there's part of you that's not living in alignment with your own truth. Mm -hmm. And that's what living an uncompromised life means to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. And <clears throat> that feels really nice to hear this summer. <laughs> um, I, so, so I talked a little bit in the beginning that the Enneagram is a really big part in your work and I would love to hear how you first came across it and kind of at what point did you know this is something that I want to really go deeper with or well, actually mm. I'm sorry I think we should maybe first talk a little bit about what the Enneagram is. <laughs> <laughs> True. It's, it's got very popular in recent years so I kind of assume that everybody's heard of it which is not the case. Um, I'd say in its simplest sense it's a um, a personality profiling tool, but that's really just the starting point of it because if used in the correct way, it becomes a tool for incredible personal and professional development. So when we understand ourselves and others through the lens of the Enneagram, we get to understand ourselves in such a profound way because we go beyond just our behaviors. We start understanding our core motivations and our fears and our defense mechanisms and our triggers and the things that trip us up over and over and over again and have us kind of repeating the same patterns year after year, even when we don't know why. Um, so for me, the, when, when you work with it in, in, a, in an intense way, there's kind of a life before and a life after because with that shift in awareness, it's quite difficult to unknow those kinds of things about yourself mm -hmm. um, and that awareness is such a fundamental part, just knowing and being able to observe how you are responding in certain situations and what's behind that can already have an enormous impact in you being able to change, mm -hmm. to show up differently, to start being a lot more intentional about how you do things. Um, and wow, in terms of relationships, I found it incredible too, because you know, you realize that everybody is wired differently. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, the, the person that you happen to be living with or working with or who you've grown up with, we think differently and we perceive the world in a, in a very, very different way. And it's not right or wrong, it's just different. And the Enneagram gives you that perspective to be able to understand where they're coming from um, and empathize with them um, and maybe start uh, seeing things a little bit differently yourself. So that's what it is in a nutshell. You asked the question how I uh, stumbled yeah. into it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's an interesting one. Um, it's one of those things that feels like it landed when the timing was right because I was first exposed to it, I think about, oh gosh, it was probably about 15 years ago. My cousin gave me a book about the Enneagram. I read it. I didn't really resonate. I even attended um, a course and it was just a half day course. Didn't really land with me. And then it was about four years ago, one of my clients was attending a workshop with me and she's a healer and an incredibly intuitive person herself. And she had this vision of me working with the Enneagram mm -hmm. and it must've been a combination of right timing, me um, connecting with her and really trusting her intuition and just the curiosity that happened to be <laughs> in my path at that time. But I took her up on it and I went to the company that she had suggested and something just clicked in a way that it hadn't clicked before. Mm -hmm. And I've been working with it solidly ever since. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's so cool. And I had the same experience. I think I'm so glad I came across your work and I've explored many other voices talking about the Enneagram since. There's tons of podcasts and Instagram accounts. It's just really like this whole universe of Enneagram <laughs> stuff once you're in there. And yeah, it's super interesting to hear different people obviously talk about different aspects of it. I think mm -hmm. all of that felt really useful to me. Um, but also the company that you're um, doing the test with feels really cool to me um, I, and I can't I think I'm not experienced enough within the Enneagram world to really say why but I just really enjoyed the test and the workbook I got from it I felt was really very specific and at the same time very open as well so I didn't actually feel boxed in the way I was worried I might in the end so that was mm. really cool. Mm. Yeah. I agree with you and that's why I've chosen to use their assessments so part of it is the degree of accuracy and, and the ongoing work they're doing in terms of validating. And mm -hmm. gosh, I wouldn't even be able to try and understand or explain the algorithm behind it. <laughs> but I've seen the group of statisticians and I trust them. But exactly as you say, the way they communicate um, the information and the insights is, is detailed. But it's also, as you say, it's got room. It, 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 it goes into the subtleties and nuances and really provides a a really solid starting point to have the conversation because mm -hmm. that's the point, isn't it? The, the report is just the start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's totally. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, I'm wondering if people hear this and they possibly have never heard about the Enneagram before. Um, what do you wish everyone knew about it? And where do you think is a cool starting point for people to kind of explore a little bit more? Mm. I would say what I wish people knew about the Enneagram is probably that it's not the stereotypes that you see on Instagram. <laughs> so I love that Instagram is so um, populated with um, Enneagram fun, let's call it. And it's playful and it's lighthearted and it creates a lovely awareness around the Enneagram. But it's so much deeper than that. Mm -hmm. And the subtleties and nuances that emerge when you work with it in a full way are much richer than those stereotypes. In fact, it doesn't really box you. It helps you recognize where you have been boxing yourself, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, and it, if, you, if you work with it properly, it, it actually it provides you that map for finding your way out of those murky waters mm -hmm. that you're already in. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, you can use it in a playful way as a starting point, mm -hmm. but if you really want to get benefits, you will be able to see that it's a lifelong journey. Mm -hmm. 
you know, there are people that have been studying the Enneagram 15, 20 years and they're still uncovering new things. Or exactly as you said, when you hear different points of view or different entry points into Enneagram, everybody's got a different perspective. Mm-hmm. You know, there's, a, there's an Enneagram in business and there's um, Enneagram and spirituality or, you know, how to use the Enneagram to get closer to God or how to use the Enneagram when you're starting your own business. Mm-hmm. There's so many different avenues. Um, it's, it's, it's a journey. It mm-hmm. completely is a journey. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. And I, yeah, want to illustrate that a little bit more because I love what you said about the playfulness and the Instagram popularity, but also it kind of scratched the surface a little bit. So one thing when I started exploring being a two, which is what I am <laughs> a little bit more was I saw posts like these are the childhood wounds for the different numbers. And, and they were kind of all written, you know, one or two sentences on the little square graphics. And I thought that was really interesting in a way. It was cool to kind of scroll through them and see, does that resonate with me? And in other ways, I was like, well, that's a really bold statement for someone to make on Instagram, you know, about, <laughs> about someone who has decided to identify with a certain number. And um, I think it's just hard to speak to someone's life experience in that way. But at the same time, I also see the flip side of just like the playfulness of saying like, you know, I'm just putting this out there and maybe this is something you identify with or maybe it's not. And I think similar to with the tarot, which I really love using and, and I'm much more familiar with, um, our interpretations will vary so widely and it's so beautiful actually to be reminded of the huge variety and how we understand as humans concepts and images and archetypes and all these different things. And I think sometimes coming across a certain interpretation and understanding that this is not what we identify with is just as valuable as having having something reflected that does really feel resonant so I think there's been just moments where I was like this is cool and fun doesn't feel true for me but it's also good to know you know Mm. Mm. that's Mm. that's an interesting perspective because exactly as you say you know if it's a starting point for understanding yourself then being able to recognize what resonates with you and what doesn't resonate with you is part of that understanding Mm-hmm. Um, for sure, and being able to say, wow, I don't think that actually fits with me, and that's okay. Mm-hmm. Where I think it can be a little bit tricky if somebody knows nothing about the Enneagram and they brand you and they, they're trying to um, uncover what type they resonate with, they might read mm-hmm. a single statement and say, well, I can't possibly be that type. You know, mm-hmm. I've had people um, say to me, well, you can't possibly be a type seven because you, you listen too well. Well, no, not really. I'm just a grown up. <laughs> or I've had people say you can't um, be a type seven because, you know, the kind of clothes that you wear are, are quite plain and then you don't wear vibrant colors. You know, that's stereotyping mm-hmm. a number and not acknowledging that there's a full range. You know, the Enneagram is just one part of who you are. And even within the Enneagram, there's subtypes and there's tri-types and there's, you know, there are all sorts of things that bring um, texture and context to how you show up. Um, so yes, I think all the stuff that's available out there on social media is so lovely in terms of starting the conversation, but we need to be quite discerning with it mm-hmm. and, and use it in a way that's adding value. Mm-hmm. Yes, I totally agree with that. Yeah. I also started reading a little bit more about the cultural research that you're doing, which is such an exciting word and it can mean so many different things <laughs> so I wondered if you could tell us a bit more about what it means to you and what you're excited about at the moment so why this topic excites me so much is that I spent um, a large portion of my previous career as a, a researcher so qualitative research in the corporate world and I've been in this space for eight years leadership development um, and personal development. And I I spent so long wondering how I could merge those two areas because it seemed so strange to just throw away a whole lot of skills that I'd spent many, many years crafting and fine tuning. So the research that I'm doing now is within organizations around their culture. So, you know, what is their culture like? What's working? What's not working? 
What does leadership mean in this organization? What do concepts like diversity and inclusivity mean? What does um, psychological safety mean in these organizations? And I'm finding it really, really, really powerful work in that it provides deep insights for the organization so that they can make appropriate shifts. They're hearing from people within their organization. Um, and the, the people themselves, the employees themselves, are having this opportunity to have a real conversation with someone, to actually talk about stuff that matters. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's really exciting to found a, a way of really matching up my areas of skill and experience. Um, and it's fascinating work because, you know, corporates – they need support. They're tough environments. Mm-hmm. People are struggling. Mm-hmm. So to be able to bring what I do into that kind of um, environment, I think, um, is very rewarding. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really beautiful. I, yes, I also look back at the times that I have worked in, within organizations and just remember the struggle under my skin and wish I had been someone from the outside coming in to really talk about the culture that we're building together and to remember that nothing is set in stone I feel as I was so young when I entered the e-commerce world and worked for different startups um, it felt to me as if I was a very lucky to be allowed into that world as such a young person giving a lot of responsibility but also I really felt that this is just the way things were and now I look back and I'm like thinking about how even though it's just me in, in my little business, I still have a culture in my business, you know? And and I can see more clearly now how if I wanted to build a team, how, how, how much my values would be present in that process. And it's not something I want right now, but I think I'm excited about all these possibilities of more intentional culture making. Yeah. Mm, absolutely. I mean, we use that word culture so vaguely I suppose but it's it's really about the people and how they're interacting with each other and how they engage with each other and the kinds of conversations that they have with each other there's a definition of culture I can't remember (laughs) it's from to be able to credit them but it's something along the lines of cultures the way we do things around here Mm -hmm. and I love that it's exactly that it's how do we engage with each other Mm-hmm. And you're right. It doesn't matter if that's between two people or 2000 people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, totally. <clears throat> I wonder what you love about being enter- an entrepreneur. I know that's such a broad question, but I'm always interested in asking other entrepreneurs mm-hmm. about how they're shaping mm-hmm. their days and what they're excited about. And also maybe what feels hard right now. So the obvious thing is I sit here looking at the ocean <laughs> <laughs> is the, is the freedom and flexibility. Um, So I love that sense of being able to design my day in a way that works for me. Mm -hmm. Um, That's really important to me. And again, that can be personality type based. Um, I also really love the variety that comes with it. So being able to take on different things and get involved in different things and no two days ever look alike, which which really, really um, appeals to me. The hard part is probably, oh, there are lots of hard parts, let's be honest. (laughs) Um, I think the lack of stability, so, you know, it's very up and down. So December, Jan are often quiet for me because that's our um, summer season and holiday time. Um, You have peaks and troughs all the time. Um, which can be financially stressful. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've had people um, want to meet up for a cup of coffee. They work in corporate and they want to talk about perhaps leaving because now I look like I'm living the dream. (laughs) And I have to say to them, well, (laughs) let's also be honest, not everybody's cut out for it because it's a different kind of stress. You know, when you're in corporate, you're dealing with the stress of, oh, 200 emails a day. Mm -hmm. Whereas when you're on your own, what's keeping you up at night can be, or am I actually going to be able to pay my bills this month? It's Mm -hmm. kind of a much more survival based Mm -hmm. uh, stress. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's, you know, not everybody's up for that Mm because it's, it's raw. Mm -hmm. Um, But the flip side of that is that there's opportunity. Um, 
You know, so if you if you employed and you have a monthly salary, then that's what you earn every month. And I don't know, say you're in debt, it means that there's only a certain amount of money you'd be able to put forward to paying that debt off over time. And it's going to take you 14 years or whatever. Mm-hmm. Despite the financial scariness of being on your own, there's always opportunity to do something about it. Mm-hmm. So there's opportunity to plug the gap or to come up with a new idea or to collaborate with someone or to create a new product. So it feels, as much as it feels unstable, it also feels really empowering at the same time because there's something you can do about it. Mm-hmm. You kind of see the potential and the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a very different motivation. I totally agree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think, I think I also have a different relationship to my creativity now because obviously it's very different to be employed and to know that anything, any creative act that you can engage with is at the end of the day, mostly benefiting your employer and maybe kind of getting you attention within the company or some kind of praise or maybe, um, and I'm missing the English word now, um, a promotion, <laughs> but, but it's, it's very different to play in that way by yourself. And I think also there's a lot of privilege in, in having the courage to take that step and try it. I think I, I was in debt when I started my business. Um, I'm still am in some small ways. Um, but I didn't have so much of a security net, um, from savings or family background, but I was living in Germany and that meant I always had health insurance and I, in an emergency would, would have, you know, shelter and food covered, which is huge. That's Mm. a very different place to start a business from. Um, But nevertheless, the first two years, I think, wow, I was so anxious a lot of the time. And now I, I still feel these waves of anxiety coming sometimes, but I have weathered them so many times now that I'm more like, okay, here we go again. Yes. Like, what, what can be done? <laughs> you know? Exactly. I don't know if those, those moments ever really go away. So I've been um, on my own for eight years now. Um, and I still have days when I wake up and I think, what on earth are you doing? Are you insane? I still have days where I think, oh, for God's sake, just go and get a job, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I also know that it's just a fleeting moment and it's triggered by something else and I don't really mean it. And now that I'm able to recognize that it's just this thing that emerges every now and then I can have a conversation with it, maybe give it a hug and (laughs) carry on with the day. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Same. Um, Another question I wanted to ask you is what community means to you at the moment. So you're working in so many different spheres almost in organizations and then you're also working with people one-on-one who want to develop in their personal life and obviously you're you're part of creatively connected um where I'm also a member and I wonder yeah like you said we are on our own but we're also always interconnected and Mm. I wonder what that means to you at the moment I must say the importance of community has actually grown over the years Mm -hmm. So when I was first on my own, I really enjoyed being by myself. I maybe isolated myself a little bit too much. And over the years, the need to be part of something else has, it's just changed. It's grown. So the online communities are a huge thing for me. So things like creatively connected or um, even maybe people that I've met maybe you're on a platform, you know, a course, maybe through a course or maybe through Instagram. It almost doesn't matter how it arises, whether it's forming a collaboration with someone or actually just having a virtual coffee catch up and saying, hi, Mm -hmm. how are you? What's going on in your life? Mm -hmm. That's become so important because over time it started getting quite lonely and quite isolating so even with the different things I was doing, um, going into organizations and running a workshop or running a workshop myself, it's not the same as having a peer that you can share ideas with, um, receive help, give help, mm-hmm. provide opinions, ask opinions. 
and just know that you're not alone sitting by yourself on the East Coast of South Africa. <laughs> you know, there's a whole world available to you. And I love that. It's, it's really, really made the world of difference to me. And funnily enough, as that online community has become more important, I've actually started forming more of a local community as well. So I never imagined myself doing that because I resonated with being an introvert and wanting to just hide away and get on with my own life. <laughs> but actually now I have, you know, once every um, second month, I have a, a group of people in my home. It's called Tea and Truth. And we just chat about stuff that's going on for us. And it provides us the space to be heard and to hear a different perspective from somebody else. And it's incredibly enriching. So yes, communities, it's changed for me and mm -hmm. become a lot more important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. That's beautiful. And I think sometimes, I don't know if that's true for you, but it was certainly true for me coming out of employment, there was definitely this hyper introverted period where I was like, whoa, I've stepped, like I got free from all of that. Now I really get to be in my own space and deal with my own stuff. And it took me a while of kind of really being in that space and fully recharging that need until I was like, okay, now I'm starting a media group and, you know, I'm, I'm open to other ways of being in togetherness again now, but I needed to kind of do that first. And I suppose that's true for so many things that when we're operating too far on one side of the pendulum, we often swing completely the other way for a period of time until we're able to find a more balanced kind of in-between space. Yeah. Um, yeah, I didn't want to work in corporate for a few years. So the majority of my work was one-on-one -on -one for mm -hmm. a good four years. Mm -hmm. And then kind of realized actually I've got something to offer in that space now and I'm coming with a very different perspective now yeah <laughs> thanks as mm. a last question before we go I'm wondering if you want to share any of your self or community care practices or maybe ways of making decisions on a day-to-day -day basis that possibly have or have not been affected by your cultural research or the Enneagram mm. so my Sure. My self-care practices change so often. Mm -hmm. um, I've definitely learned to use my gut instinct and my body as a decision maker over the years. Um, and I use that in terms of what I need right now. So for example, at the moment, um, I would say meditation is massive for me. So is rest. And so is plugging myself into environments of learning and inspiration. That actually feels like self-care to me at the moment. Whereas in another phase in my life, it might be um, yoga and running. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But that's, I kind of just listen to where I'm at at the moment. Um, and for community, it's really feeling like the one-on-one -on -one nurturing and I would say opening the space for meaningful conversations in whatever format that takes. I've pulled very far away from social media recently. So maybe the last four months or so I haven't touched social media just because it started feeling like an obligation and it started mm -hmm. feeling heavy. And, you know, this is very much a, an, an Enneagram seven thing that we, <laughs> we tend to avoid pain and seek out pleasure, which means I have to watch my decisions. Mm -hmm. I have to watch that I'm doing things in a way that feels like they're aligned with who I am, but not as a cop out or an excuse because I'm mm -hmm. trying to avoid something difficult. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it's, a, I mean, it's an interesting topic because I find I very much use my gut instinct I get a physical response to a request or an interaction, which gives me a yes, no about whether I want to work with that person. Um, but then I have to sense check it. Mm -hmm. I sense check it to say, right, maybe some of that was fear. Maybe some of that was about um, the difficulties that's going to be involved around stepping up and playing big. And, you know, there's going to be a bit of hard slog behind it. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I, yeah, I have to check in. I have to check in a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> Thank you so much for everything you've shared. I uh, wonder if you can tell us what you're currently offering and where people can find you. So the best place to find me is probably on my website, which is uh, jessicaace.com. I will make a re-emergence on Instagram soon, I'm sure. <laughs> but I can't promise anything right now, and I'm going to use the excuse of self-care. <laughs> yes, good. Uh, <laughs> and um, probably the best way of um, finding out how to work with me would be on my website. You can find out about the one-on-one work. So I start all my programs with Um, the Enneagram as a foundation and then we go into um, whatever is suitable for that person. So there I incorporate my other modalities such as breath work and body talk, um, eating psychology, whatever other um, areas are best suited. So we work intuitively at the time. And yes, so for your listeners, there will be um, a special offer, which I think we'll put in the show notes. Um, to give you a, a taste of the Enneagram, so the report and a, and a debrief session. Yeah, and I hope to, I hope to hear from you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wonderful. I will put all of this in the show notes. And I just want to say again, your website is such a beautiful space to hang out on. So <laughs> I hope people will check that out. Thank you so much, Jessica. It was really beautiful to talk to you and I'm excited to share this. Thank you so much for having me. It was so lovely. <laughs>